students, welcome you all to my channel Khan's Commerce Tutorial. I'm Hashem Ali Khan, Khan sir from Khan's Commerce Tutorial. Thanks a lot to one and all for the response and comments I'm getting on my channel. I've uploaded so many videos. I'm getting good response from the students in the form of likes, subscribers, etc. To get the maximum advantage, watch my videos again and again. So my suggestion is, before watching the video, go to the description you will find the link there, get a printout of the problems of my lecture. So get the maximum advantage from my videos, not only to face the examination, but also to boost your knowledge. Thanks a lot. Subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. And uh, share it, like it and press the bell icon so that you can get the notification of the latest videos, which I am uploading every day. Okay, see you again. Take care. Best of luck. Hello students, welcome you all back in the session of second part of unit number three. Unit number three is common stock analysis and valuation. Already in the previous session we have discussed what is the meaning of the term common stock, what are the features of common stock and what are the different approaches for its valuation. We have already discussed that the valuation of common stock is very difficult. It's not as easy as valuation of fixed income security because the stock, uh, the common stock, there is no certain returns on common stock. The return on common stock will fluctuate every year. It is uncertain. That's why it will be difficult to calculate what is the value, intrinsic value of the common stock. So different approaches are there. In the previous session, we have discussed about dividend capitalization approach. So how to calculate the intrinsic value by capitalizing the expected future dividend at a particular rate. Another approach is capitalization, earning capitalization approach. So the uh, intrinsic value will be calculated by discounting the future earnings, expected earnings at a particular discounting rate. Another approach is P ratio. Another approach was CAPM approach. So different approaches are there for calculating, finding out the intrinsic value of share. Or intrinsic value of share malum karna bahut zaruri hai kyunki we compare the intrinsic value with the market value to take a decision whether to buy it or sell it or hold it. So some more approaches are there. In this uh, session we are going to discuss what are the other approaches apart from those approaches to calculate the intrinsic value. Then first one, then fifth one, fifth topic of our study is free cash models. Free cash models or cash free models we can say like this according to this approach we calculate the cash flow from the operations of the business when business operate karenga, so definitely there will be cash inflow and cash outflow from activities of the business the business will receive the cash inflow apart from that there is a cash outflow so net cash flows we will calculate the net cash flows means cash inflows minus cash outflows so we calculate all cash inflows and cash in outflows in future expected cash flows for the future period of time. Now by using a discounting rate, we find out the present value of all those cash flows. So by calculating the present value of all those cash flows, we can be able to find out the value of the enterprise. This value of enterprise will be divided by the number of equity shares. So from the value of enterprise, first we deduct the preference capital and debt capital, debentures, bonds. So value of the enterprise we calculate minus preference capital minus debentures. Divide it by number of equity shares. We'll get the intrinsic value of equity share. This is free cash model. Then the next model is relative valuation using comparables. So we calculate the value by using comparables. We'll calculate the value by using one or the other comparable. The comparable are price earning ratio. Already we have discussed the intrinsic value can be calculated by using the price earning ratio. The price earning ratio is we are finding out the ratio of market price with the earning. The formula for P ratio is current market price per share divided by earning per share. So we calculate the average PE ratio of the enterprise for the past few years. 
and we uh, as a rule of thumb we calculate what would be the earnings of the company at present in the current year in the current year what would be the earnings and how much is the pe ratio by using this pe ratio and earnings we can be able to find out what would be the intrinsic value this is called pe approach next is price by sales the price by sales approach just like price earning we are calculating price by sales here p stands for market capitalization the market capitalization means multiplying the market price per share with the total number of shares of the enterprise a company hai company ka total number of shares ko multiply karenge what is the current market price we will get the market capitalization this market capitalization will be divided by the total sales revenue in one year how much are the sales revenue so we calculate we calculate the ps of the past few years we get a ratio of p by s and that ratio we can use during the current year by multiplying the ps ratio with the current turnover current turnover तो पहले पीएस रेशो मालूम करेंगे लास्ट फ्यू इयर्स का एक एवरेज पीएस रेशो वी गॉट नाउ दिस पीएफ पीएस रेशो विल बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द टोटल अर्निंग्स ऑफ करंट ईयर मल्टीप्लाई दिस टू विल गेट द टोटल मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन ऑफ द करंट ईयर दिस डिवाइडेड बाय नंबर ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर्स विल गेट द मार्केट प्राइस और इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू पर शेयर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज प्राइस बाय बुक वैल्यू बीवी स्टैंड्स फॉर बुक वैल्यू so in this case many authors says the intrinsic value cannot only be calculated by earning by sales etc by free cash flow apart from that we can find out the intrinsic value by using price by book value actually book value ka matlab balance sheet value in balance sheet we'll have the assets and liabilities from all the assets we subtract outside liabilities we get the net worth and that net worth will be divided by number of equity shares to get the book value that book value will be compared with the current market price so first we calculate the price by book value of the past few years we find out the average ratio price by book value and this will be compared with the current book value multiplied with the current book value we get the intrinsic value per share so these are the different techniques of finding out the intrinsic value by using different comparables the comparables which are used are earnings sales or book value by using these comparables we can be able to find out the intrinsic value this is only a theoretical concept we don't have any problems on this now the last topic in this unit is security market indices or security market indexes now see here market index will play a very important role for security market and portfolio analysis it's a benchmark to find out how the economy how the stock market is moving that's why stock market is called the barometer of the business barometer is an instrument which measure the atmospheric pressure so here this sensex uh, this uh, index number stock index stock market index number will act as a barometer it will show how the i mean economy is faring how the economy is moving so it has always been of great importance in the world of security analysis and portfolio management so people from different walk of life use this as market indicators investors both individual as well as institutional investor will make use this market indexes to take a decision whether to buy or sell or hold index is a benchmark actually it is a benchmark it's a standard for making a comparison to evaluate the performance ye benchmark jo stock index hai stock market index hai isko use karte hain to compare it to evaluate the performance of our portfolio by individuals as well as institutional investors even the economist and statisticians use this stock market indices for making planning for conducting the planning to find out the business cycles we'll use this stock market indexes so an index is calculated by tracking daily by daily tracking the share prices of constituent member companies ye index number jo calculate kiya kara hua rehta hai by taking the 
constituent members companies share prices for example in india we have sensex and nifty two very important index numbers in india are sensex and nifty the sensex is an index comprising of 30 constituent companies top leading companies in the market the bombay stock exchange ka jo sensex hai wo sensex jo index hai wo sensex hai aur ye sensex jo banaya gaya hai top 30 companies leading companies ka stock prices ko lekar banaya gaya in the same way the nifty consists of 50 top leading companies which are acting in the market so sensex and nifty are calculated using market capitalization method ye index number we calculate karne ke liye alag alag methods hai to hamare paas jo sensex aur nifty hai they are using market capitalization method to find out the index for example the base date the base date for sensex is 1st april 1979 whereas the base date for nifty is 1st april 1995 so we will take the index as 100 on this date, on this base date, 1979 is the base, 1st April 1979 base date for Sensex and 1st April 1995 is the base date for Nifty and we will take 100. Now what are the basic, how to calculate this index? This index will be calculated on daily basis. So first we calculate what is the market capitalization today of the 30 constituent companies ab jo 30 companies hai har company ka market capitalization daily malum karenge <coughs> to first first ek company ka malum kar liya second company third company like that we have calculated for all the total companies to total market capitalization of 30 companies as on the current date similarly we have already calculated the market capitalization of the previous day so current day ka index number malum karne ke liye we take what was the index number yesterday the previous day that will be multiplied by market capitalization on the current day divided by market capitalization on the previous day example today aaj ki tarikh mein total market capitalization kitna hai to market capitalization kaise malum honga multiplying the number of shares of that company with the current market price example xyz company is a constituent company in sensex sensex mein constituent company xyz company hai wo company mein totally 1 lakh shares hai example small example 1 lakh shares hai ek share ka price market mein 10 rupees chal raha hai Current market price 10 rupees. So 10 rupees into 1 lakh, 10 lakh rupees is the market capitalization for XYZ company. Usi tara, dusri or ek company, PQR company, uska bhi market capitalization manu kare. Is tara 30 companies ka total market capitalization manu kare. So aaj manu kare current day, ye current total market capitalization hai. Kal ka bhi total market, uh, market capitalization tha. So current day ka index number manu kare ke liye previous days index into current days total market capitalization divided by total market capitalization of the previous day. this in this method by following this method we can be able to get the index number of current so this is the method of calculating the index index numbers so in india the most important index number which are widely used are sensex and nifty Sensex is the stock index of Bombay Stock Exchange and Nifty is the stock uh, index of the National Stock Exchange of India. So this is all about the theory. Apart from this, I'll provide the complete material of this uh, detailed theory regarding this Sensex Nifty. If you draw just to go through the theory once or twice, you can be able to get the complete command on what is the importance of this market indexes. One more thing, the in importance of this index has increased over a period of years. Traditionally, this index number was used as a source of information. Khali market kaisa fair hora, market upswing upar jara ya down me aara, ye manum karne ke liye index number use karte the, pahile traditionally. But nowadays, but in recent times, indexes are used as a direct application in France in the form of index funds and derivatives. So derivative contract or index funds contracts will be used on the basis of index numbers. So its application changed. 
पहले खाली एज ए सोर्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन यूज करते थे लेकिन अब वो एक डेरिवेटिव यूज हो गए डेरिवेटिव कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बनने लग गए हैं इंडेक्स नंबर पर तो देर इज एच बिजनेस टेकिंग प्लेस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इंडेक्स नंबर सो द थ्योरी आई प्रोवाइड द थ्योरी इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन यू जस्ट टेक अ प्रिंट आउट ऑफ दिस यू कैन बी एबल टू गेट द कमेंट तो कंपेरेटिवली वेरी स्मॉल थ्योरी वी हैव इन दिस यूनिट नंबर थ्री राइट सो इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन विल स्टार्ट द प्रॉब्लम ऑन कॉमन स्टॉक वैल्यूशन